right. Go back. It's been probably a couple of weeks from the last video clip. So, uh, we're going to do this front end. So, uh, I don't remember. It's probably part seven. And I'm trying to uh, probably do for this series, get the front end done. It's going to be a lot to do. I got to, I'm going to redo everything. I'm not going to repaint nothing, except maybe the wheel. Uh, I may break it down and do it. I got to go through all the brakes and stuff. Go through the bearings and the, and the neck, polish some stuff up. Just make everything better. Uh, spinometer doesn't work because the cable's broke, so I got a replacement. Gonna take care of a lot of that. The bulbs in there don't work, they're burnt. So, you know, you just have to take everything off and drop it anyway to get to the bulbs up here. So, you know, whoop de doo. Do I get it? So, anyway. You see how the steering just falls over, and that has a lot to do with uh, this nut up here just being too loose. You just you want it to kind of hold position, or I do. I mean, I don't know about you, but uh, your opinion is yours, mine is mine. So I'd rather just tighten it up so that it doesn't want to do that to kind of hold its own. It's gonna gonna wear in it's gonna get loose over time so you know just getting it to the right tightness is that's up to you so i don't think there's anything special as far as uh what the uh so-called torque because there's not really a socket or anything that you can put on a torque wrench to uh tighten that up it's just you know you do it by feel feels good to you and it's good to you you know whoop you do and anyway let's uh i need to get my hoodie to take all that crap off anyway uh, i kind of got to get here and clean up shop just before all this, because I had a nightmare of junk everywhere. And, uh, anyway, I need about a 14 millimeter. And that's what I need. And 9 sixteenths. Anyway, let's, uh, I'm going to take the brake cable off. And just, uh, anyway. You can, you can pull this arm up forward to get the thing out of your way. You want to take the uh, that little barrel that's in in that, put it on the cable end, and put your nut on there. Now, a lot of you might see, I don't know if you can see it, that's supposed to, supposed to be kind of like dipped. Now, there's a damn dip. The edges are wore off, so uh, if you can see that, that's probably going to get replaced down the road. You got to have that that dip in there to, to stop it from turning and backing out. So I think this one was probably backing out. You need to take, pull on it. Uh, you might need a flathead screwdriver or a pair of dikes, something to get in there and. You can get on that flange up against the uh, housing and pop it loose. That's a pain in the ass. Let me tell you, there ain't nothing simple about this. some kind of something up. I guess I'm going to get the I'm going to get my 
dikes, wherever the hell they are. Or needle nose. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see better push that spring out of the way or something. I think it's so bad going together, but it's you got to get that spring out of the hole. Maybe I'm just the guy that's ain't doing it wrong. I guess I'll take the damn brake in there though. That probably help. Get up here. That'll probably give me enough cable slack to deal with my problem here. Feel it, yep. Anyway, what about do with the nut? Take put your nut back on that shoulder bolt for your brake deal so you don't lose a combination. Set it. Set it down in a bucket or something. And you don't lose it. You take the handle up here, get that out, pull that loose. You got that. that might, there we go. That's the trick. Look at how easy this shit was. God, dog. Alright. Now, I bet the speedometer cables broke down there. So. Yeah, a pair of pliers and I'll do it. Channel locks and pliers. This cable, I'm not, I'm not one damn bit concerned about the welfare of this cable because it's junk. Something's broke. Hopefully it's not in there in the hub, but I, most of the time it's the cable. They just, uh, they just dial, quit working. I like the government. Uh -huh. uh, boy, it's a little greasy and gummy. If I put a little lube on there, I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't know. I hope that. It doesn't. I don't see any problem with this again. But if you need to, before you, you know, shit can this cable, there's a seal in there. You might need to save that seal in case you need it. Or losing on another one. So the little things like that you can save. Uh, uh, I think what we'll do now is we'll drop the wheel. That's going to take some weight off of it. All that. So we got to get the cotter pin out. I got to get my my good dike strip. Let's see. Good cotter pin over here. I, I mean, some I kind of like to run my axles. Like I started the rear wheel going this way, and I I didn't touch this one yet. I never had this one on, but I like to run my axles in the same direction. Uh, especially you know, like if you lay your I say lay it over, but uh, I'm gonna say. Put it on the kickstand. You know, when you park it, well, who the hell wants to see the nut? You know, I mean, your nuts are showing. You're showing your nuts to everybody. So I like to put my nuts on the side of the kickstand here. Because most of the time, this is the right hand side of the bike is going to be the one that's at an angle that most everybody's going to see most of. See, so if you're particular about it, do it that way. Do whatever damn way you want. I'm not, I'm not your boss. Yes, same. Uh, pressure wrench always helps. And a Phillips screwdriver or something to stick in that hole. What you do? A lot of times it's dirt jammed in these holes. Sometimes you can't even get a screwdriver in it because uh, the holes mushroom. That's going to hold that. Take that castle nut off. Always put a castle nut on it. I don't know 
I mean, besides CHP or some of them other places, uh, maybe Face Hardware has castle nuts. But one thing, you either want something like this. This is a dead blow, and this is just a plastic camping hammer. Either one, knock that bolt out. I'll just take the camping hammer out. Remember right here, you want a washer in there because there's a little recess in the fork. Uh, you want your metric washer in there. I don't know what size it is. Probably 14. Uh, it goes right up in there and uh, helps keep the head of it from being uh, sunk into the fork. I don't know why they just couldn't do it instead of milling that out. Whatever. So this has been a be an honor little booger. So, in times like that, you take, take something like this. Knock the hell out of it. Let's see here. By the way, this is like April 5th. It's a Saturday, whatever damn number day that is. Most of y'all are at home, bored out of your damn mind, ain't got nothing to watch on YouTube. Red Beer don't put, put me like one, one video out every other week now. As far as the cameras is about the same. They're all self-quarantined. But uh, yeah, somebody screwed the damn tabs up on the Speedo gear. That's probably my problem. So... What I need to do is chuck up my drill and that carefully and see if it spins. If not, I'll just leave, I may just leave the cable. Uh, anyway, you see how nasty the wheel is for that aspect. It's better over here, but it still looks like doo doo. So, finally, I need to turn the fork around. <laughs> uh, I think I got fork seals. I went ahead and pre-ordered those. I'm, I'm hoping I did. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. But you know how that is. I got boxes of doo-doo over there. So anyway. You take your spacer out so you don't drop, drop it and lose it. Put your axle and spacer castle nut all together so that stays uh, I don't need to have the wheel up here right now. We'll break it down later and get all this. Uh, I won't, probably won't show any video of me blasting anything, and I am going to do it. I'll paint it up. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to use the Honda paint because that's like, by the time you get it in the mail, it's like $25 a can. So, whoop de do. I got some of VHT stuff that uh, many by Mike use. Well, we got some. 10 millimeter headed bolts up there. So let me, uh, let me a doggone minute. Don't rush me. You got nothing else to do besides count your toilet paper. Uh, let's see, I'll put that back on there. Yank that back on. Yeah, we take the fender will come right. I'm not going to take these screws off the fender because they look like they're, they would twist off if I don't treat them first. So, anyway. Yeah, the horn's going to fall out. I wouldn't think this fender's ever been out of here. Who knows? The fender got, uh, it's got a little, a little out around down here. Yeah, it's got a, it's a little bit poo pooed right there, the dent. I think I got enough time to knock all that out and polish it up, but you know, that's on the list of things. So anyway. 
Uh, I am going to go ahead and take the headlight apart. Get that. Oh, yeah, what's 12 millimeter? You're sitting there telling me you need this and that. Well, damn it, I know. I just ain't got all my ass and done it. Okay. Can't always get what you want, like Mick Jagger said. Orange cherry soda. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Take the damn headlight out and then wire the stupid thing. Now, I'm going to take my screw and put it right back in the bucket. I don't want to have to go find another one. Well, I don't know if my Ace Hardware has these. But I know either this is the one that came in it or I had to buy one. Looks like this one's got a little rust. I, I think this one was on it. Uh, if I got a new one, it wouldn't have had no rust at all. Uh, I wish I had a, a powder coated headlight bucket. I just, I just really, I'm really hell bent to get stuff powder coated. It just looks better. I just don't trust any of these paints anymore as far as quality because damn stuff's made in China these days. Either it's the liquid's made in China or the whole damn thing is, you know, I don't know. I mean, they may ship the, ship the gook over here and they squirt them all in cans over. I don't know. They just, you know, stuff, you know, like this paint. Hell, this paint on this motorcycle lasts forever. I mean, it's seen some sunshine, but it's still decent. You know, give them some credit. You know, I don't know what else. This is what I hate, pulling these damn wires apart. I mean, like, hell, if you ain't never skipped your damn knuckles on a headlight bucket and cussed a little bit, you, you ain't missing nothing. Yeah. Boy, that's what I hate. The little sharp corners on some of this stuff make you, make you, sh you know, nuts. So it's like, I got to get every one of these damn things out of here before I can pull, pull this out. Gee. I mean, they make needle loaders, but I just can't do the same thing with my other hands as needle loaders on this. So, ooh. All right, make sure... It ain't like I gotta keep these washers. I had three washers on that one and one on this one. So I think one of them went over here. I never had the headlight bucket apart. And these bolts are supposed to be polished strong. I will wire wheel them and polish them up the best I can. So anyway, they're tangled up like snakes. Ah! Okay, I mean that, that headlight bucket just deserves a powder coat for sure. Take it down there in Waco and get it done. I don't know if they're open since all this stupid corona shit, so that's how I feel about it. I mean, sure enough, I don't need to take my damn handlebars apart just to get the frog cable out, but I will take the uh, this right side out. Now, I've already dealt with the handlebar situation. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I do it like that. I don't lose my bolt. These are pretty good, pretty good shape. Let's sit down back there. Okay. And we got to get the uh, rear brake cable. Out. So does it got a nut on it? No. Let me see if I can't do it this way. Take that bolt up and we'll put it side by side on the other one. Take the lever out. Give me that thing loose. Slide the cable out of the forks. I can leave the cable in place, tuck it back alongside the motor. Brake handle is with the brake handle laying in the upside down fender. 
That's where the horn's going. My own little container. And one thing I, I'm going to do is I'll probably put a new rubber boot, uh, plug in it, whatever the hell you call it over here in the frame. I've got those. I've got the sleeves. Uh, I'll just probably take a pair of scissors or something or dikes and cut all this off instead of trying to fish the wires out. It's just it just doesn't make any more sense to try to pull the wires out individually. Uh, but I'll have to pull this plug out and get the rest of it. Uh, I think it's taped together in there. I'll have to undo all that crap and, you know, make all that smell like a bucket of roses. But anyway, let's, since we got that, we got high low switch wires. We're just gonna take this one off. I'm going to Yeah. I almost forgot. I'm gonna test the speedometer, so let's put that back in there. I don't ever put my little C clips, snap ring, sneak C clips back on here anywhere. I just don't, you know, now that I know that if you don't, if you don't get around to turning these knobs or doing anything with it, they will seize up. So I, I'm not going to worry about having that problem because uh, there is a thing called anti-seize. That stuff's really great. Uh, I use a lot of it at work. I mean, if I had... I, have some, I might have some here, but I probably need to get a new bucket. But you know, if you don't use anti-seize and never heard of it, go look it up. That's the only thing you can do to stop some of these bolts and stuff from seizing. Now, let's see. Okay, I don't know if it's the right way. In first gear, we're doing 10 miles an hour. Woo! 50, about 54 miles an hour. That cable's good. Now what I'll have to do is I'll uh, take that apart real carefully. Uh, I'll take that thing and I'll probably flush the lining out and the uh, flex cable in there. And clean all that out, put some fresh grease in it, maybe some motorcycle chain lube of some sort. But see, I'm, what I'm trying to save is saving this seal. We're about this seal in here. It also it seals everything up from water, but it also, to some extent, is going to keep your lubrication from your grease or your oily whatever lube you, that you're recommended to use in here or advised to use uh, from from leaking out so they can get worn i don't know if you can get replacements i, you, I bet you could uh, this is probably shot to hell yeah it damn sure is but i may may have one I saved somewhere. I don't know where I'd put it, but I'd have it somewhere saved. Uh, anyway, but yeah, all that in there will be worked on and cleaned up. Down there in the pile. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is, I think it's a 14 up here. I lost my nine, uh, 14 socket, so anyway. I'm using a 916. So I always thought 14 was bigger than a 916, but wrong. Where is my 38 stuff? I gotta get me a long extension. I got so many tools. Even more than I need to deal with. Yeah. What I'm doing is taking the nuts off that. Or on the bottom of this 
your fork, uh, your handlebar bracket. They also hold your speedometer bracket stuff on. Did it, did it, did it. First time off and who knows. I think when I bought this bike, I had to take them off to get it in the, get it back with the Yukon. But anyway. Watch where everything goes. There's my metric lock washers. You know, for a little bit of good looking, and so what? You can clean them up. I've got a tool to mess a spanner wrench to take these these nut things out, and all this will be polished up. Uh, anyway, I'm to take the top of the triple tree off. You want to get you about a big 12 inch crescent wrench or a socket that fits that, a uh, big nut. I'll probably put a new nut on there that's chrome. Uh, just because I got them. Probably got like 12 of them. I don't know. I, I over ordered on eBay once. But anyway, it's just got a little bit of crusty, rusty stuff on there that looks like doo doo. It's, it's not that the, the nut is still useful, but I mean, as far as the look factor. Uh, yeah. Now you're probably wondering, he's getting to the point that I've always wanted to know. How the hell do you take a spark apart on the 72? But I'm also going to show you a thing about how to save the ball bearings. And uh, uh, I've got to get a, got to get down there and hold your hand on it. No, I've got, some, I've got a better, better way to do it. Uh, and I hope you... You take and run with it and hope it catches on. So let me sit here. I need to check and see if y'all are still recording. So, yeah, we've got like 27 minutes already. So, anyway, uh, now this chrome triple tree, I don't even want to polish a snot out of it. We'll, we'll get to that. You take them hoodies off. And you got to make sure that you you do have the right angle. This, these were never bent or crashed, so they're not they're not straight because they got to go in and angle back out to match uh, be parallel with each other. It's got to be parallel with this side and this side together. I got rust up on here, so that that might be a problem. I had to put y'all on pause here. A little twisty poo if you want to just make sure the oil don't any oil don't pop you in the face that washer is maybe just a little smaller than the shaft that's probably 25 millimeters or 25.4 uh, just by looks the next thing you want to do to get the fork out is take these bolts out on the back. They are 9 sixteenths, I guess. I'm going to see if my little gun ain't got enough spitting power. See if it's got enough spitting power to knock them out. I bet you're 13. Whoa! Oh, I got it. Now, oh my God, that's what you're going to do now. You can't get these skirts off until you get the shock shaft out of there. Everyone, what are you talking about? I'm sitting there looking. Uh, these might have a shoulder. But anyway, you got these chrome hoodie hoodies on there. Uh, I got a set of plastics, but these are the metal. Okay, no, it doesn't have a shoulder. These. They're all that size, so I'm gonna bet that I'm gonna have to take a minute and sand paint the piss out of those. Uh, let me come around there. Well, I already, no, I did take that. Right. Let's see here. Rip, rip, rip. I 
got to get me a bolt bucket started. And that plenty of buckets, I just ain't got no started. Man. I'm going to get some more buckets. I ain't putting them in cardboard, that's for sure. Plastic load buckets and stuff. Anyway. Yeah, they may be. They may be the same as them other ones for different gear models. They may be exclusive to 72 because they look a little bit different. But they're probably the same. Uh, this is the same style, but the same way they were doing them on, on my CV100. Them damn skirts are stuck. So I may have to, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take a minute. Uh, Probably take my sandpaper and a wire wheel or something to knock them out. I'm going to leave uh, the fork assembly up in the bike for now. That way I can hold it. It's got it's 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 safe right now. I'll bring y'all back just a minute. <laughs> we start trying to attempt to knock one out. All righty, all righty. Okay, we back, we back. We took a little time and I got my little die grinder and wire wheel hooked up. I scaled all the rust off, knocked it out. Uh, I sprayed a little bit of uh, slickum spray on there. So, here's what you do. Right in this area, in the middle, bottom, your, uh, your triple tree assembly right here. We took that bolt out. You either can do it from the top if you don't want any uh, chip paint looks. If you don't want any chip paint looks, do it from the bottom. And uh, you take your hammer. You want a screwdriver because the chisel's kind of fat. So, you know, but you take that screwdriver because it's got a long slope to it and it can get down in the, in the split in your triple tree. Take a hammer. Now I have not tried to attempt this to knock this out yet. Well, this is the first go-go. Get up here. I'm going to try to knock the damn thing out. I may not have enough spread on it forks so they give me a bigger hammer and let's see let me that do it I don't know if it's working I think it's going. Yeah, it's going. It's not going very willingly. But, you know, that depends on how much slip and spray you put in there. These should spin on there. They're starting to loosen up. Anyway, let me get some slip and spray back up in there. I spray it up in there. Helps if I hit the spot. Anyway, don't worry about these bolts up here. Let me run it down in there some more. I don't want to hurt the damn bolts. I got new bolts, or I'm going to clean them up and reuse them. Well, let's do it from this side. That might help. got a lot of rust up all up in there. Starting to see the spring. 
It is springtime. <laughs> Damn, that bolt's getting a hell of a beat. I think I need to spread that damn, damn doodad out a little more. Ow! There we go! Damn! Hope you can see that. Look at the filth on there. But anyway, rust. Uh, you can tell where it's been sitting in the triple tree, clamped in for since 1972. So that's a little, a little uh, 48 years, I think. Yeah. Anyway. I'll get all that cleaned up. Probably can't even get all this off. Okay, I pull it out a little bit. I have to get all that up on the wire wheel. Let me sneak over there real quick. Hold what you got, Ninja. We got all that junk knocked off. Didn't take a minute. There we go. There we go, rascal. So you got a long plastic insert goes in the bottom where the springs are tightly wound. And up here where they're loosely wound, you got the shorty. Well, that's how that rolls. So you got a skirt. You got, okay. I'm saying since this one's never been off, there's a part that looks like it's cupped, like it's folded over, and it's down in here, and that goes up. There's another side that I don't know if they're halfway in the middle. No, they're not. I don't think they are. So let's see here. The redneck measure stick. Okay? Take, stick something in there and put your fingernail right at the end of it. Okay, see the difference? This side right here is shallower than this side, the upside. The upside is deeper, okay? Remember that. The upside of this chrome sleeve is deeper. And these right here are probably the same as a 73 and up. I think. I'm going to swear to it. But you just have to take they come apart just the same way, the snap ring right there, and they pop it right out. So this is relatively good. I don't have a lot of rust and pitting down here where the happens. So a lot of this is going to have to get cleaned off, wire wheeled, polish the forks out, uh, clean all that up, oil it, all that. So... I guess there's some oil in it. I just don't have a spring for the rebound on it. But yeah, this is all going to clean up. I beat the holy hell out of that bolt. It looks bent. But you want to run it all the way down in there so it doesn't, you know, it, you know it, the shoulder part hits the bottom of your hole in your shop. So you're not you're not using the threads to to do all that d dirty work. So anyway, we'll just let me grab my snap ring pliers for a minute. I gotta figure out where the hell I put them. Okay, I got me a pair of these. These are one of them Cummins, Cummins sales I bought, bought these at one time, a long, long time ago. Uh, anyway, 
We got the 90s, and they're built for the internal snap rings. You got external snap rings, you got internal. So I'm going to do this right here. And then catch them eyes. Got it. One popped out, but I still I still had it in the other. You don't want to lose them snap rings because you'll have to go find some. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing down here. Okay, there we go, booger. All right, let's see. Let me show you how I get her done. Put something in there like that. Yeah. I'm going to get up there on the table. I ain't going to table dance. But... What's got it trapped in there is a seal. The seal is... You got to knock the hell out of that seal getting it, or knock it, knock it pretty good getting it in. So the seal's got it trapped. Maybe I'll take the bolt out up top. So the, there can be a, like a vacuum, you know, you, Sucker. Oh god. That thing was flat ass wore out too. Whoo! Man. I think I may have to let me dump the oil out. Let me bring y'all back in a minute. Oh, I think that, that oil may be holding me back. Damn. Okay. I went ahead and just, I poured, I don't know, just a handful of oil out. It's just nasty. I went ahead and chucked it up in the vise, and you're probably saying, oh my God, he's scratching the shaft up. I don't care. I mean, it's going to be covered up. I can sand it out. It's not going to, the fork seal doesn't run up in here. So, whatever. Uh. Some people might put aluminum angle iron in here or something, or brass angle iron. Whatever it is to protect this. And it's tight. So all I gotta do is get something in here and knock the piss out of it. Gotta be able to fit in the hole. So, what do I have? Look. Maybe a screwdriver. Cut off a piece of rod. I probably should have took a minute while I go and look for that. I don't want to beat on the casing or nothing. Okay, I got it. I got it. Hang on. I got me a bolt that's been whacked off. Uh, I don't know how I got it. I may have bought it off eBay. Got snookered at it. So, anyway. I'm going to put that in there like that. And we're going to see what, what the heck happens. Where my good hammer go? Hang on, guys. Hold on. There we go. Oh, me some oil catching rags down there. Oil tote. Alright, there we go. It's going in the bucket. 
Alright. We got the shot. Out. Ain't nothing down in there. There is a dampening. Uh, like down in the bottom. You'll see a, a bolt. A Phillips head. Excuse me. We got hiccups. A Phillips head screw bolt down in there. And it sticks up and it's got like a kind of a needle thingy up in there and it's when if the shocks ever get bottomed out it at what it does it's a cushion so if you're shocked you jump it uh, trying to be like evil Knievel and your shock goes bottomed out once it hits that it's going to restrict that flow of oil through all your discharge orifices in the in the shaft your shaft is hollow so you, your oil flows in do some orifices and stuff built in that's how you get your shock effect or your damping through your fluid but once you hit that bottom down there it's really going to slow it down so it doesn't doesn't snap out the ass into your or bottom into your uh, housing here but there's once you get all that flushed out with parts cleaner or brake parts or whatever you use, solve it to clean all that out. Uh, all these holes are going to get cleaned out. Uh, I'm going to wire wheel all this, knock it all off, and uh, polish it. And uh, to take the seal, I didn't even, this stayed here, so I didn't scratch it. I would think it might have leave a little impressions in it, but I'm putting new seals in there and we'll be good to go. I want to make sure all this is smooth. Any sharp uh, rip out marks, it'll rip your seal up. It may not actually rip your seal up, but you know, if it's, if it's really bad, it's going to tear your seal up. You take some sandpaper or wire reel or, you know, after you do all that you can put on your polishing wheel and polish that out the best you can make it as smooth so that's all up to you uh, the seal doesn't doesn't get us much any higher I think there's some gunk down here that's wiping off uh, just you know know where your seal works if you got any pitting in your sealer you may have to get your uh, fork fork shaft uh, redone somewhere at a machine shop or try to find another replacement somewhere on the, on the eBay's or somewhere uh, I think Mike's Mini Trails or somebody they part stuff out sometimes you might be able to look out buying something from them but anyway it didn't have much oil in there at all and a lot of that has to do with this seal being wore out it didn't leak out of the screw hole it didn't leak out of the bottom of the out of this or that so all oh, this is oily I mean this is this is dirt sticking to oil you know nobody gave a damn to fix it years ago so it is what it is so you know everything's gonna get cleaned up I'm gonna knock the uh, other fork tube out I'm not gonna show you how to do both of them once you do one, the other one's pretty much the thingy. Uh, let me let me put you over here to the bike real quick. Uh, get you up there. Now that other skirting. Once you get the the shaft out, the fork, this should just come right off like that. That. Uh, it has, it's built a certain way. It's got got itself made where, where it doesn't. It's not going to uh, bang around like a bell, make it ding 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 sound. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, that's it. That's a '72 teardown on the front end. Now there's things I got to do. I'm gonna do the forks. Put the seals on. I may bring you back here in a minute trying to assemble that. So, 
Uh, yep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend a little time cleaning stuff up where I can get stuff to go back together. Bring it back after a while. Guys, I almost forgot to do something. And I'll show you how to take that thing out without losing all your damn bearings. Uh, what you can do is, uh, that's the thing I ever figured on doing. Just take your mag, a clean one. You can wipe that one off. Uh, anyway, you're going to lose most of your your balls down here, down here on the bottom. So if you stick that magnet down there, and for one thing, this thing is, is finger tight. It's like that from the get go. And I hold it up from the bottom, and I, I lost the ball from the top. Lay it on the table. Anyway. We're gonna get another anyway. Alright, I know they're hitting the table. But it's making me look stupid here. A couple of balls. You do that cautiously. Or you you wanna make sure that where you hear one land, you could put an eyeball on it. Uh, it's about to come off up here. I got a magnet on the bottom. I hadn't lost any out of the bottom yet. Uh, it's just dry. That's that's one reason you lose a bunch of them because they're dry. They just fall right out. So I'm gonna take this magnet up here and. Go around there and see if I can't pick them all up, or most of them. I got enough of them out of there. Should be 21 on the top, 21 on the bottom. Now the bottom down here, pull it out carefully. Okay, there's one. I'm just going to put it with those, that collective bunch of them. I'll have to count them. I think we got, we're going to be able to get them all accounted for. But the thing is, we need to make sure that we grease the damn thing up real good. There we go. I just got this magnet deal from Harbor Freight. You can get them domino magnets up there too. Really cheap. Uh, I've done this a time or two, but you know, I'm not gonna count the magnets on camera. You gotta make sure to stick your finger up in that hole. Make sure there's uh, no balls resting down in there on that shoulder, because you got your bearing race that's hammered in on both ends or pressed in. From the factory, and if you drop one from the top, it it could land down on its shoulder. And also, there's I can see here if there's a hole, there's something up in there in the tube. But I wouldn't think that you no know, ball bearing would get stuck in that hole. It's just maybe like a quarter inch hole or something. So that's how you take that out. Now, how you clean all this up is your business. A little bit of gasoline on a rag, some parts cleaner, some, or whatever you want to do to try to clean these races out, uh, to reassemble all that. So, I've got a lot of work to do. i got to take my Dremel and clean the, the holes out in the bottom uh, where the shocks went through the triple tree. I guess I'm going to have to get a screwdriver and something to clean all this out. But we'll get it all back together. I can't, I don't feel like I can do anything with the shocks until I get this part back together. Because if I get the shocks rebuilt, I still have to do this. So, uh, I got plenty of work to do on this. Uh, well, I don't know how many minutes I got 
racked up on you already probably an hour so I may uh, I may call this first video I don't know or 7a a shop rebuild or something like that but uh, getting fairly long but the uh, work's going to continue for me and uh, that way I can load the video in without taking forever so guys I guess uh, we'll, part 7 video 7 part 1 whatever it is however I'll name it uh, uh, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe make comments or whatever uh, just don't don't say anything negative <laughs> yeah right but you know whatever criticize you know give me some advice or something uh, for something you do that you think maybe I ought to jump in and try to do that you already know make something easier whatever or if you just like it just tell me you like it give me a thumbs up well, guys I appreciate you hanging in there for right now but uh, we're gonna wrap we're gonna call this uh, call this off right now but what you see uh, after this will just be part two and basically it's just gonna be me continuing on so uh, guys y'all have a good one thanks for watching